The most urgent and utmost concern of the human race today is none other than climate. Rising temperatures caused by the excessive burning of fossil fuels from human activity have contributed to a warmer world, leading to more disasters in the forms of typhoons, earthquakes, and storms that plague our nation. As the Philippines faces serious humanitarian concerns in the face of the big one, and as it continues to face more and more floods that hinder our nation, we are left to ask as the common Athenian, what can we do? Where is there hope? And why does this all matter? My name is Luigi, an Athenian like any one of you. Our school has expressed its commitment to addressing the problem of climate change. Its thrust for sustainability and disasters reduction can be seen in the buildings around our campus. The Matteo Ricci Study Hall, Rizal Library, and even the SEC buildings are all good examples. But if we're talking about buildings, then we have to talk about the newest building on the block, the Arete. It's not done yet, but one can't help but wonder, how does the Arete fit into sustainability and disaster reduction efforts of the Ateneo? Does it have any systems in place that directly address these? What's the chemistry behind these systems? Ultimately, what is Arete's role in pushing sustainability forward? These are the questions we're going to try and answer today. In understanding the university's efforts towards a more sustainable environment, we had the opportunity to speak to excellent individuals on campus that would give us insight on why these were all important. Safety and security surely is important for Ateneo, as it strikes a balance between allowing the students to exercise their freedom of mobility on campus while still preparing for the worst of the worst in light of concerns to our safety. That's why numerous earthquake drills and other initiatives to reduce car traffic exist on campus to address how there are so many potential hazards during a disaster. Uh, number one, safety. We cannot compromise on safety. During the planning process, we have to think ahead, uh, plan ahead, and uh, an organization should be put, place, put in place to, uh, to manage uh, disaster in case it happens. On our part, uh, we we see to it that uh, safety, the safety features inside the building are in place also, like the CCTV, uh, the sprinkler system in each uh, level, and uh, the security people that will eventually take over when the building is uh, constructed. We also uh, include Arete visitors and their uh, parking spaces. And we, 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 uh, we recommend whatever uh, necessary uh, changes or plans that need to be in place. Safety and security surely is important for Ateneo, as it strikes a balance between allowing the students to exercise their freedom of mobility on campus while still preparing for the worst of the worst in light of concerns to our safety. That's why numerous earthquake drills and other initiatives to reduce car traffic exist on campus to address how there are so many potential hazards during a disaster. The Arete is known as the creative hub of the Ateneo, where ideas are explored and where the arts are treasured as a space of innovation and discovery. For a building like this, sustainability shouldn't seem to matter. But for us, it means everything in finding solutions for our future. You can look at sustainable development in several ways. It looks at uh, three, per, uh, three dimensions or three aspects. One is um, uh, society, another is uh, economic, uh, economy, and the third is environment. And there are several models to see the relationship. One is called the nested domain concept, where the economy is actually part of society, it's embedded in society, but society, if you look at it, is really embedded in nature, in, in, the, in the physical world that we have. So you have three concentric circles. We're, we're also bringing that into the way we build in our environment. So um, the Ateneo has uh, wastewater treatment systems, both for uh, for separate buildings or groups of buildings, like our decentralized wastewater treatment system. We do rainwater harvesting. 
in the Ateneo. So those are those are um, institutional lifestyles that we hope will also um, teach our students how to, you know, how how to do things, how how to be less, how to be less, uh, not to be as resource uh, rich in their lifestyle. Basically, what we have done is to create guidelines. So there is, um, we have a document called the Ateneo Sustainability Guidelines, and we we put there like uh, what um, what our expectations are or what our suggestions are for every building. So uh, our desire is for every building to have a wastewater treatment system. Uh, for the new buildings, if possible, to incorporate a rainwater harvesting system, um, to use efficient uh, electrical systems or lighting systems, for example, LEDs instead of fluorescent, uh, uh, orientation of the building so that the amount of um, energy needed for air conditioning or Will will be lower because if if you have a lot of windows, which many of our modern buildings have, you no, know, you have a lot of glass windows. Glass is, uh, gives it a greenhouse effect, and um, so the inside of, of buildings which have glass windows that are oriented towards the uh, east, south, and west will tend to be very very hot. And so what happens there is you consume more electricity. So the building design is very important so that if it minimizes the coming in of sunlight, then you don't have to use as much electricity. You can also, uh, it also depends on the systems, the, the air conditioning systems that are being used. So we're always trying to look for new technologies. Um, um, it is a, a challenge for buildings like the Rizal Library or the Arete because they house uh, books and um, paintings and other archival materials that really need to be kept at a particular temperature and humidity. In the Arete, very stringent guidelines are in place, as well in light of the recently implemented Green Building Ordinance in Quezon City. It's the first of its kind to be under its specific requirements that range from the introduction of a sewer treatment plant, recycling treated water, and harvesting rainwater for use in irrigation. As you can see, the chemistry is everywhere when it comes to making sustainable systems. In the Arete, it exists in the considerations made before the project to test the soil and the drainage systems for risk to calamities, in the preservation of energy when using air conditioning operations to reduce power consumption through building automation, and even in the wastewater systems to maximize the recycling and treatment of water for future use. In the end, we're called to look back at what the Arete is for. What is its vision? Why do we need to push for sustainability moving forward? I, I think creativity happens when you make these crossovers. In fact, the ones, and I've told our faculty this, you know the ones who win Nobel, Prizes, the ones who are creative, they're either young okay, to the field or they're, they're, they're new to the field. They might be old, but they're new to this field. They, they, in a sense, they're coming from a fresh perspective. And you need that. Sometimes we can be very close-minded about many things until someone comes along and tells you, why not, why not see it from this perspective? Who will provide that different perspective? You have a lot to learn from others, and that's why we try to foster this interdisciplinary crossovers. I think the Arete is designed to be that. The uniqueness of the Arete doesn't stop at how it pushes the boundaries of our imagination. It asks us to be grounded in the reality that we face, a threat that not only buildings must resolve, but lifestyles must change for as well. So when asked, what can we do? Start by looking at the buildings around you and allow yourself to be inspired at the capacity our lives have to do good in preserving and protecting our world today and tomorrow.